another one. All right. So this one sounds like one that we have heard before. It says, advice for becoming a manual tester. I live in the UK and I am new in general to IT and software and have never had an IT related job before. I recently completed the ISTQB foundation qualifications and I, and I have been learning SQL queries and Python and I'm also starting to learn Selenium automation testing. I have a degree, but it's not related to software or computers or STEM. Do you guys think I have a good chance of finding a train E tester slash QA job and are there any other areas I should be brushing up on before looking for a job? This sounds like a question that we have ran into a few times. I'm always intrigued when I hear about the ISTQB certification. The, um, the test lead, he actually dropped a video today talking about certifications. And I think that the majority of, of experienced, seasoned veteran QA engineers, were, they kind of have the same opinion towards certifications, especially the ISTQB, um, where it's, it's cool to have, but, um, I've never, like when I, when I review resumes and interviewing, I never, um, I never like gave it any weight or credence or anything like that. Um, I, if you're new, right. I look more for, um, like if you're new to the field and let's say there is some type of entry level position or something like that, um, you might not have that much experience, but I will definitely look at your, like your projects, um, how you code, what you code. If you've written any, um, like sample test cases, sample, um, defect reports, um, how your, how your automation code is, things like that. Um, and then you know, then like, if, especially in the entry level, then you have to answer like um, some type of critical thinking questions, scenario questions, um, you know, because here's the thing, right? With the, and, and here's, the, here's the reason that we probably don't value the certifications as, at, as much because it's all theoretical knowledge, right? And that there, you see, they snuck in again. I didn't start the clock. All right, you know what? clock has been started we just we when this happens we all right let's start the clock all right here we go so like i was saying before they tried to sneak one in on us right the reason that we probably don't value these istqb um or these certifications as much as um newer people think they're valued is because um when you don't really know much about what you're doing, then you think that like getting certified is going to um, make you, I guess, more knowledgeable. But while it might make you more book smart, it doesn't give you that much more um, practical experience and practical understanding, like how to critically think through certain processes and all that good stuff, right? So that's why, like, when um, when we when you hear that question, we're like, eh, like it's cool. And I'll give you an example. When I when I ask like um, in certain groups, uh, certain QA groups that I'm in, where it has like uh, some like people who are trying to get in, in the field and everything like that, and I'll ask them a um, like an interview type question, right? And then they start giving these answers with all these big words and stuff like that. And um, for me, like you, you can see, like when I do these streams, I, I struggle with like uh, with S's, with P's, and with uh, words with three syllables, right? So even sometimes with words with two syllables. So it's like when they start giving all these crazy words that they got from this um, this from this um, certification manual that they they memorize the questions that um, or they memorize the answers to the questions that are going to be asked on the test, and then now I, I ask them a question where they have to think outside of the the boundaries of the test. And I'm like, well, you would like, this would become a flaw. Like you would miss this, 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 
critical areas of the test that you're doing. So although you have like the, the fancy terminology and stuff like that, the customers who are going to be impacted, they don't care about your certifications, your fancy terminologies, all that stuff. They care about them getting their product working and they care about um, not being negatively impacted, right? So that is why I, I can't speak for the test lead or for any other QA engineer. I can only speak for myself, but that's why I personally don't really care for, for um, these certifications. Like it's usually, it's usually these um, government agencies who will require like their contractors to have these certifications because um, they think that um, they think that it's like that gives you some like more knowledge or um, reputation or something like that. But um, yeah, and that's why I <laughs> primarily um, stick to the private sector um, when I'm working because um, we are more freer to, to think and move around and stuff like that. Right. So, so that's that part of the question, right? Um, now, the part of your question where you're asking, uh, blah, 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 let's see, it says, move this to the screen, where it says, I have a degree, but it's not related to software, computers, or STEM. I mean, there's a lot of people who have a degree that's not related to software, computers, or STEM. It, as, long, as long as you can show like where you got your, your education from, right? I think that's very important. When you are doing, when you are doing, um, when you're, Going into tech, for me personally, I don't really care about the college degree per se as much as you can show where you can where you got the education and that you are able to do, to do the work. So, like, let's say you get it from from Coursera or Udemy. I would say, like, all right, cool, that's that's great. Now, show me that you can do the work. And one of the things I like about um, like those Udemy type courses is that it it kind of walks you through how to like it actually gives you that knowledge on how to do the work um, for a little cost as well. Um, but it, there's still a lot of gaps in there. And that's why it's one of the reasons that uh, I do the work that I do is try to fill those gaps and try to help, um, to try to help people actually go from the, the theory phase to the actual practical application phase, because there's always a big gap, um, from like how we, how we structure our resumes, how we interview, how we prepare our, ourselves for the, for like the real world of working and stuff like that especially if you've never been in tech before and you're trying to transition, it can be, a, it can be um, a bit challenging and overwhelming and you can get very, very frustrated if you, if you don't know how to properly navigate, right? Because a simple, a simple paragraph on your resume might make you not get the type of responses that you should be getting, all right? So that's that. And then um, do you guys, do you think I have a good chance of finding a trainee tester QA job? I don't know how it is in the UK. I don't know how it is in the UK, right? Um, but here, while it's like in the US, while it's possible, it is hard. And why, like, it's hard because I'll, I'll put it like this. Um, when, when, I was, when, when I was going to, moving to a different um, job or company at the beginning of this year, right? I've been working in QA for 15 years, right? And um, I was applying like everyone else applies. And it, it, I guess like it might seem faster than, than like most other people, but it took like uh, maybe about a month to land, to land a position and then another month to actually start that, that position. But it was a lot of applications, it, but it, I, had, I had a strategy, but it was still a lot of applications, right? Um, a lot of interviews. Uh, it, my day was set up like a full work day, and all the things that I was doing to to be able to uh, accomplish that. Right. Um, so, if it's if it's tough for a 15 year veteran to get a new position, right? It's going to be tough for entry level, especially nowadays. Uh, companies are looking for um, for more advanced um, QA people, right? You might be able to come in like at a at a more entry level type position with uh, maybe web development, but for QA because there's a limited amount of QAs that companies hire. Like you'll have like four web developers or software engineers um, for like one QA um, position. So there's there's less QA positions that are available. So they're going to try to they're trying you're going to try to up the 
the skill level of the QA. So that trainee tester job. Um, and that's why I think that a lot of these boot camps, they, they, they have these internships that they, that they offer where you're kind of like either working on a real project for them or working on like a fake site or something like that. So they can give you that internship training. But at the, at the end of the day, it's, it's not that real work experience. Right. So, um, I would say like, just, just apply for everything. Um, but those entry level jobs are so hard to come across right now. Um, and are there any other areas that should be brushing up on before looking for a job? So I'll say this. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything you should ever be doing before looking for a job. Start your applications, right? Write the, here, here, here's, here's a suggestion. I'm, I'm not even sure why I'm sharing it on the stream because it will definitely go in the other platform that my elite group of individuals will be part of. But I'll say this, write the resume that you want and then go and get the skills for that resume. So start applying for jobs because let's say it takes two, let's say it takes a month to two months for people for, for, to start getting responses. Use that, like apply and use that time to start leveling up your skills so your qualities can match the resume and then you can articulate your, you can articulate yourself um, in the job. But if you wait to get all the criteria that you need to apply, that's somebody else getting applied every single day for a job that could be yours and you're, you're, you're delaying the process. All right. So that's what I would say for that. Like brushing up on your skills, you know, um, create, create a QA portfolio. We have a video for that, or I have a video for that. Um, create, um, write test cases, uh, write defects, automate, learn Selenium, learn API testing, um, play around with Playwright, play around with Cypress, all that type of stuff. So you can have, you can have a nice resume, even if you're not the most experienced in all of those things, right? Create like maybe five to 10 automated tests in those. And that way you will be able to, um, you'll be able to show something. You'll be able to show some work because me personally, like I like to see, I like to see work um, at one company when I was, um, interviewing QAs, I created, I created a, a test through HackerRank where the, Q, where the um, QA applicant would have to go through that test. And based on their score, right, um, I would decide if I'm going to interview that person or not. And, it, and it's not even like uh, the score, like percentage is the, and I'll be all, because then I'd go and look at their answers to see, okay, what, what did they struggle on? What did they do good on? And, um, and based on some of the answers, I'm like, you know what, like they might have scored like a low score, but I'm still going to interview that person because I could see something in the way that they answered the questions that that um, I found intriguing or captivating. And, you know, that doesn't mean that they're going to get hired, but I, I'd want to talk to them to get a better understanding. Right. So do all those things. Right. And start applying. Apply with the resume that you want to have and then go and make that resume true. Right. That is my advice for you. And. I, I'm gonna have to refrain these type of advice because those are th those that information is gold. All right, so let's let's just move on from there. Okay, let's just move on. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to tap Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos. Enigmatic Joker.